Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children, by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth, for the islands are awaiting his law. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, and those who live in the darkness from the dungeon. The Word of the Lord. The Lord will bless his people with peace. O oh, give the Lord, you sons of God, give the Lord glory and power, give the Lord the glory of his name, adore the Lord in his holy court. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor. The God of glory thunders, in his temple they all cry, Glory! The Lord sat enthroned over the flood, the Lord sits as king forever. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true God sent his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was bought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all men and women. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The heavens opened and the Father's voice resounded. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and he was baptized in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit like a dove descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favor rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. It seems to me that however far they have distanced themselves from the church, most parents will want baptism for their children. It may be for reasons that fall short of the ideal, to please their parents or grandparents, or to secure a place in the Catholic school. I've even heard parents say, I think it's time we got the baby done. However, if we all looked into our consciences, could any of us say, hand on heart, that our motives for doing anything important were always entirely pure? The first reading says today, he does not break the crushed reed nor quench the wavering flame. That could easily apply to people seeking baptism for their children. Yes, there are times when our faith is tested, even put on hold, maybe during the present pandemic. The church may even seem a forbidding place for some parents. In today's reading from Isaiah, it says, I have taken you by the hand and formed you. Perhaps, as a Catholic community, we need, as it were, to take more people by the hand and encourage them to return to the practice of their faith, not discourage them. Having said that, I don't think the baptism of children should be treated in a kind of a cavalier way either, where commitment to the church is not considered important. Baptism is primarily for entry into the church and not limited to ensuring a place in the Catholic school. If children are not exposed to Sunday Mass, then Mass in the school or even the, uh, the RE lessons will be purely academic. 
taking their children to Sunday Mass is very much part and parcel of endeavouring to bring them up in the faith which the parents promised to do on the day of their baptism, on the day of their baptism. Some people mistakenly think that putting off baptism until children are old enough to decide for themselves is the way forward, the way to proceed. I don't think so. Children are hardly going to decide for Christ if they've never heard of him or they've never heard of him properly. If in ordinary life the children are gradually introduced to their wider family, surely it's only right that they get acquainted with their church family as well. So for the seeds of baptism to grow in the child, the children need to feel part of a community of faith from the beginning. Jesus said, let the little children, let's not forget about the little children, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. Have we put any obstacles in the way of our children or grandchildren attending Mass? Now we know very well that peer pressure can often cause secondary school pupils to abandon Mass. It's another form of bullying and it should be dealt with in every Catholic school, that form of bullying particularly. In my experience, the happiest teenagers are not those who are slaves to social media, but those who belong to faith groups, like for instance Youth 2000, or the many young people's groups who go to Walsingham each summer for religious festivals also like celebrate, and they really enjoy them, and they enjoy each other's company. The Bishop of Plymouth, who attended one of these weekends, said last year, I was struck, he said, by the joy and enthusiasm of so many young people in their faith. Now the present pandemic might turn out to be a wake-up call we all need, both young and old, to rejuvenate us in our faith and live out our baptism to the full. Gathered as the body of Christ, let us pray together to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for parents who present their children for baptism. May they live the Catholic faith they profess. Lord, hear us. We pray for the children of this parish. May their attendance at Mass give them a real sense of belonging to the Church, which will stay with them into adulthood. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those involved in raising awareness of life issues. As Catholic Christians, may we always uphold the sanctity of life. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are working in health care through these very difficult times. May they be able to cope with the stress both physically and mentally so that they can bring relief to those who have succumbed to this deadly virus. Lord, hear us. We pray for the dead, especially those who died recently and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May eternal life be theirs. Lord, hear us. Let us now pray to Mary, the mother of all believers. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Father Almighty, in the Spirit we pray and ask you to hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him, who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before you, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> 